The deeper we look into space, the farther back in time we travel. Each photon captured by the James Webb Space Telescope carries the memory of an ancient universe, one that existed long before Earth, the Sun, or even our galaxy was born. But now, some of that light appears to be revealing something far stranger, a universe that existed before ours. It's a hypothesis that has re-emerged with new urgency after Webb's most recent discoveries. And it's backed by a Nobel Prize-winning physicist, Sir Roger Penrose, one of the greatest living theorists of gravity and space-time, believes that the think patterns and structures we're now detecting may be echoes from a previous cosmos, a world that lived, expanded, and died long before the Big Bang that gave rise to our own. To understand how we arrived at this idea, we need to go back to the beginning, or rather, what we call the beginning. For nearly a century, the Big Bang Theory has been our best description of the universe's origin. According to it, everything – matter, energy, space, and time – burst into existence roughly 13.8 billion years ago from an unimaginably dense state. Since then, the universe has been expanding, cooling, and forming the stars and galaxies we see today. For decades, this model fit the evidence perfectly. The Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, served as its smoking gun, the faint afterglow of the Big Bang itself, discovered in 1964. But the James Webb Space Telescope has now forced scientists to confront a difficult truth. The early universe does not look the way the Big Bang model predicts. Webb's infrared eyes have detected fully formed galaxies existing just 300 million years after the supposed birth of time. Galaxies that are too large, too bright, and too mature to have evolved so quickly. According to our current physics, there simply wasn't enough time for matter to condense, stars to live and die, and heavier elements to form. Yet Webb's deep field images show spirals and clusters that resemble galaxies billions of years older. Something doesn't add up. When NASA released Webb's first full-color deep field image in July 2022, astronomers noticed dozens of compact redshifted objects. Redshift measures how much light has stretched as the universe expands. The higher the redshift, the older and distant the object. But many of Webb's targets had redshifts so high that if calculated correctly, their light began its journey before the Big Bang itself. That's impossible under the standard model. At first, scientists thought it might be an error, perhaps dust, lensing, or data misinterpretation. But with every follow-up observation, the results held. More and more ancient galaxies appeared, each one pushing the boundary of known cosmic history further back. Something doesn't add up. For some cosmologists, this means our current model of the universe might be incomplete. For others, like Penrose, it opens the door to a radical new interpretation, that the Big Bang was not the beginning at all. Penrose's idea, known as Conformal Cyclic Cosmology, or CCC, suggests that the universe undergoes an eternal series of cycles, called eons. Each eon begins with a Big Bang and ends in a slow fade as black holes evaporate and matter decays into pure radiation. Over unimaginable timescales, this radiation spreads out and loses all structure. Eventually, all that remains is light, and with nothing left to measure change, time itself becomes meaningless. In that state, Penrose argues that the geometry of the universe becomes indistinguishable from the super-hot, dense conditions that existed at the Big Bang. The end of one universe becomes the beginning of another. In other words, our Big Bang wasn't the start of everything. It was a transition, a rebirth. Penrose first proposed this idea over a decade ago, but it remained speculative. Then came data from the Planck satellite, which mapped the cosmic microwave background in exquisite detail.
Among the smooth patterns of temperature fluctuations, Penrose and his colleagues identified circular regions, zones with slightly less variation than their surroundings. He called them Hawking Points, named after his late collaborator Stephen Hawking. These, he argued, are the last explosions of black holes from a previous universe, their radiation echoing through to ours. Many physicists dismissed the claim as coincidence, but now Webb's deeper and sharper observations have reignited interest in CCC. By peering farther back than any telescope in history, Webb has revealed not only ancient galaxies, but a possible pattern to their distribution, a faint but repeating geometry in the background structure of the cosmos. Some researchers see this as consistent with what Penrose predicted, the fossilized imprint of events that occurred before our Big Bang. At NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, cosmologists had begun testing these anomalies against standard models. They found that the brightness of some early galaxies cannot be explained by simple gravitational collapse. Instead, their luminosity suggested they were influenced by pre-existing gravitational wells, as though the fabric of space-time was already shaped by structures from an earlier epoch. If true, this would mean our universe inherited its architecture from a previous one. There's another piece of evidence. The strange cold regions in the cosmic microwave background. One of the most famous is known simply as the cold spot, a vast area of space where the CMB's temperature is significantly lower than average. Traditional inflationary models can't fully explain it, but in Penrose's cyclic model, such regions could represent the gravitational footprint of a previous universe's collapse, a bruise left behind when two eons touched. Even Einstein's equations hint at this possibility. His theory of general relativity describes gravity as the curvature of space-time, but it doesn't specify what happens when time itself loses meaning. If the future of one universe becomes so uniform that no clock can distinguish moments, then, in mathematical terms, it looks identical to a new beginning. Time, like matter, might recycle. To visualize this, imagine drawing an infinite spiral on a sheet of paper. Each loop represents a universe. They're connected yet distinct, their ends blending seamlessly into their beginnings. That's how Penrose envisions reality, not a single timeline, but an eternal self-renewing rhythm of existence. Webb's discoveries are not definitive proof of this, but they are forcing physicists to reconsider long-held assumptions. If galaxies existed before the Big Bang, then the Big Bang itself might have been just one chapter in a much larger story. Some scientists, like physicist Paul Steinhardt, who helped develop inflation theory, have proposed similar ideas. His concept of an ekparotic universe suggests that our cosmos was born from the collision of higher dimensional brains, vast membranes in a multiverse. Each collision triggers a new Big Bang. The mathematics behind this model shares surprising similarities with Penrose's cyclic approach. Both imply that creation is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process. This raises profound questions about what before even means. If time resets with each cosmic cycle, then there is no true beginning, only transformation. The atoms that make up our bodies may have existed in some form in previous universes, carried across eons through the geometry of space-time itself. But how can we test something so immense? That's where Webb's next phase comes in. Its instruments can detect subtle distortions in infrared light caused by gravitational lensing, the bending of space by mass, if these distortions show consistent circular patterns beyond statistical randomness, it could support the idea that the current universe's structure is a continuation of a previous one.
Meanwhile, the search continues in the cosmic microwave background. Future missions like the Lightbird satellite will measure its polarization with greater accuracy, potentially revealing the fingerprints of events that occurred before the Big Bang. Despite the excitement, many scientists remain cautious. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and the cosmic data we have is still open to interpretation. Yet even skeptics admit that something fundamental is shifting. The simplicity of the old Big Bang narrative no longer holds. Webb is showing us a universe that is older, faster, and more complex than we imagined and possibly not alone in its existence. For Penrose, that's not a disappointment, but a revelation. The universe, he once said, is not something that happened once. It is happening again and again. If he's right, then the Big Bang was not an explosion from nothing, but the quiet echo of a much grander rhythm, the heartbeat of infinity itself. This idea reshapes everything we think we know about time, death, and renewal. It means that black holes are not just the endpoints of matter, but bridges to new beginnings. The death of one cosmos could see the birth of the next, with energy and information flowing eternally through the geometry of existence. For now, these remain theories but theories built on data that Webb continues to refine. Each new image it sends back is not just a glimpse into the distant past, but a mirror reflecting something deeper, our ongoing attempt to understand the infinite. Perhaps one day we'll confirm that our universe is part of a cosmic cycle, one aeon among many, each giving rise to the next in a perpetual dance. Or perhaps Webb will uncover something even stranger, something that defies both the Big Bang and cyclic models altogether. Whatever the truth, one thing is certain, the more we learn, the more mysterious reality becomes. As we stare into Webb's deep fields, we're not just looking at galaxies, we're looking across time itself, at the faint after images of worlds that may have come before. The light reaching us now began its journey billions of years ago, long before the Earth existed, long before there was anyone.